Hey guys, Retro Badger here. Welcome to the next playthrough of Star Trek The Next Generation Final Unity. I've put a link below to the previous episodes if you haven't seen those yet. So last time... Oh dear. Ah, oh, look! I'm assuming that's the manuscript thing. We've got the manuscript. Captain's log supplemental. We have successfully retrieved the Garidian's fifth scroll, and Tabak has verified the manuscript authenticity. Mm. Receiving an emergency transmission from Starfleet headquarters. Attention all Federation vessels. This is a priority one alert. A Romulan fleet has crossed the neutral zone into Federation space. We have saved one of your communication relays from a Romulan attack. I am more than willing to assist you. When this programmer is twisted around the rod's end, it can alter the rod's settings. Set course for Horst 3, Warp 5. Okay, so we've just beamed up from the planet's surface, and we're on our way to Horst 3. Captain, the ship's computer has completed its attempt to read the damaged Chodak data crystal we received from Chancellor Larak. Any success, Mr. Data? Only in part, sir. Much of the information was corrupted, as we had feared. But there is one section that may be of interest in our current situation. As Chancellor Larak guessed, Phrygis was indeed a rebel base. The crystal explains how the rebels stole information from the main computer on Alinor and used it to attack the Unity device itself. The Rebels used a programmable encryption rod to access Alinor's main computer and learn vital information about the Unity device. This information was then used to plan a raid against the Unity device. There is then a corrupted section and a brief mention of a space freighter called the Rinkel. I am not certain what the connection is between the freighter and the raid. The complete text of the information may of course be found in the ship's computer. Okay. Let's have a look at the computer. Oh gosh. Enabled. Wow. Systems online. Ah. Okay, so this explains what the stuff does that was given to us. Hmm. So I have a feeling that's gonna become pretty useful. As we play through that information. Wow, we've got 20 light years to go. Captain Log, we have arrived at Horse 3 to request some advice from the noted Vulcan archaeologist Shaynok. Instead, all we have found here is a recorded message boy broadcasting continuously. Helm. Standard orbit. To whoever hears this message, the sudden incursion into this region of space by a flotilla of Romulan warships has made this remote expedition untenable. For the safety of my crew, I have decided to abandon this site temporarily. In the name of science, I ask that you do not disturb my work on this planet. There is one site that requires special care. The Chodak site seems to have a field that camouflages it to normal sensors. I located it mostly by accident. There is a platform jutting out part way down a deep shaft in the ground. Further investigation has been blocked by an ancient rock slide. As much as I would like to honor Shaynok's request to leave the site alone, we don't have that luxury. The current situation makes it imperative that we learn where this planet Alanor is. This Chodak base may have the information we need. We should form an away team at once to investigate this shaft that Shaynok spoke of, but we'll have to be careful to disturb as little on the site as possible. Okay, let's get down there. Beam down coordinates selected. Yep, I think we've got all the right people. Okay, wow. The tricorder says these rocks have been here for thousands of years. I'm reading something on the other side of them. Hmm. 
What about Mr. Dacer? I do not believe that will work. Oh, I was kind of hoping you'd be able to pick them up or something. Um, right. Oops. What about phasers? Ooh, that did something. Can increase the power setting. Hmm. Oh, yes, that works. Okay, let's go in. Oh, wow, look at this. There's a screen over here, apparently. My readings indicate this mechanism may still be operational. Can we use it? Look! A shooting star. On Earth, that means you get to make a wish. <laughs> shooting star is actually a misnomer. In reality, they are simply meteors which are incinerated as they enter a planet's atmosphere. I know, Data. And rainbows are just the refraction of light by water droplets. <laughs> but they're still beautiful. Oh, that's funny. Oh. I do not believe that will work. Should we try some of these gadgets that we were given? I see no way of using this with that object. I see no way of using this with that object. Hmm. This looks like an information display. The question is, what kind of information is it supposed to display? Right. I almost think we need to power this up somehow. Is there a power source around here? Ooh, this looks a bit like a power core. Hmm. The device is like a subspace phase spectrometer. We use them to measure the intervals between subspace phase pulses. If I were to speculate, I would say that this particular site was used for making astronomical observations. That would explain why this outpost is so far from the main body of the Chodak Empire. Perhaps they were attempting to make clean observations, uncontaminated by interference from their own transmissions. Let's record as much as we can. Our computer can analyze the data and make sense out of it later. There's a lot of scientific equipment in this part of the site. This must be the heart of the station. We must be especially careful to examine everything we find in detail. Okay. I get the feeling I'm missing something here. looks uh, maybe yep that did something um so will this one go in that no. Ooh! oh that's cool i don't see anything special about it really <laughs> i do i'd like to get this information into the ship's computer and find out what it is Some of the data has been corrupted over time. However, I believe the ship's computer can still extract a great deal of information. Okay, let's take the rod. So I'm assuming they've just downloaded the database onto the tricorder. I do not believe that will work. Readings indicate that this chasm is 3.487 kilometers deep. The walls are composed primarily of igneous rocks. Knowing where this instrument was pointed may help us determine what the Chodak were attempting to study. This instrument is set to measure the interval between certain subspace fluctuations. There's a lot of scientific equipment in this part of the site. This must be the heart of the station. We must be especially careful to examine everything we find in deep. Oops. Sorry, cut you off there, Jean-Luc. OK. 
Okay, well, I think we've got everything we can from here. I scanned through those machine pieces a few times and they just said the same stuff. Beam us up. Now we can an analyze the data in the com ship's Captain computer. Log. The archaeological site on Horst remains a fascinating mystery. I'm hoping that our ship's computer will be able to analyze the tricorder data we discovered at the Chodak site and tell us quickly what we need to know. Sensors are picking up a vessel. Who? Oh. Intercept the target. Helm, plot an intercept course. Oh, uh, tactical. Yellow alert. A Romulan warbird is on sensors. Oh dear. We she are being hailed. Locking weapons. Do you need a moment, Captain? I understand you humans need to pray before death. You know as well as I that our ships are evenly matched. A fight is in nobody's best interest. I am very much interested in a fight, Captain. The destruction of the Enterprise will be a great boost to my career. <laughs> Gotta look after that career. Get him, Mr. Worf. So these are the phaser arcs, I believe. We are being hailed. Targeting Romulan Warbird. Oh, this is neat. Being hailed. No damage. The shield is not holding. Ooh. Full spread. Look at that. Torpedo away. We are being hailed. Yeah, on the Y. Do you need a moment, Captain? I understand you humans need to pray before death. The crew of the Enterprise has always been willing to sacrifice itself for the principles of the Federation. <laughs> Enemy ship is firing. Wow, that's a lot of torpedoes. Savor your victory while you can, Captain. You will find it short-lived. Wow. The Romulan Warbird has been destroyed. Alert cancel. Condition. Hmm. Mr. Data, any suggestions? I suggest we contact Starfleet, Captain. Mr. Worf, your analysis. Captain, we should check our orders from Starfleet. Any suggestions, number one? I'm sorry, Captain, I don't have any suggestions right now. Sir, we are receiving a signal from Starfleet. It is Admiral Williams. Who? On screen. Greetings, Admiral. What can we do for you? An unknown alien race has just crossed the neutral zone into Federation space. All attempts to communicate with them have failed. Are they hostile? Definitely. So far, every ship and outpost in their path has been attacked, disabled, and left for dead. Do we have any idea of their objectives? That's the strangest part. It looks like they're pursuing the Romulan fleet into the Zatanas Nebula. Then my first instinct will be to let them go with our blessings. I wish we could. Unfortunately, Outpost Delta-08 lies directly on their present course. We can't afford to lose it. Proceed at best possible speed to the Yaz system and intercept. Understood. Picard out. What are your orders, Captain? Set course for the Yaj system. Maximum warp. The Yaj system. Engage. I like these little sort of cutscenes in the middle. They look really cool. Ooh, warp 9.2, that is fast. So I wonder who this is. Alien vessel ahead. They have locked weapons onto us. Red alert, shields up. Hail them. There is no response. They are firing. Evasive maneuvers. A warp? Go to 
Ooh, what is that ship? I don't recognise it. Oh, cool, we can go full screen, look at that. The enemy has engaged its self destructive Oh, that is a weird ship. Felt that one. Uh oh. So yes, the ship was destroyed, and I almost wonder if it's because I was messing around with the uh, tactical console, pressing fire. I should have just let Mr. Wharf handle it. So I've had to go back and replay. Alien vessel ahead. They have locked weapons onto us. Let's hope things go better this time. There is no response. They are firing. Evasive maneuvers. Go to red alert. Target is weapons. As I was saying before, it's a very strange looking ship. Ooh. Oh, yes! Brilliant! That went much better, didn't it? Um, I'm confused. What's going on here? Should we go back to the bridge? What? I thought we destroyed it! Oh, there's more than one. Mr. Data, check the ship's computer for any possible identification of these aliens. We have no record of contact prior to these attacks. There have been rumors of a war between the Romulans and an unknown race on the other side of Romulan space. Perhaps these are the same aliens. I want to know why we had so little warning before the alien vessels attack. We did not detect them on our sensors until they were already within visual range. Did they have a cloaking device? During the battle, our sensors registered emissions similar to those of the alien probe that attacked Merton stations and the planetary shield protecting Phrygis. A chameleon field? That appears to be the case. Perhaps these aliens were also responsible for the attack on Merton's station. The chameleon field is an ancient Chodak technology. These aliens might have borrowed it from them. That would explain their attack on the station. They were after the Chodak artifacts. Mr. Data, plot the course of the alien vessels based on their attacks in this sector. The pattern of their attacks would indicate that they are headed for the Zatarnus Nebula then it appears that the Romulans aren't the only race seeking the Unity device. Helm, standard orbit. I have correlated the ancient Chodak star chart with our own astrogation charts. Does it reveal the location of the Unity device? I can find no mention of the device. However, the chart does contain the planet Alanor. If Alanor was the administrative center of the Chodak Empire, isn't there a chance some trace of the Chodak remain, even today? That sounds like a long shot. It might be the only one we've got, number one. Where is Alanor? The planet is located inside the neutral zone. I don't think we need to worry about the treaty at this point. Still, we must use caution. There is a provision of the treaty which allows for scientific research. We'll use that as a cover for our mission. <laughs> Mr. Wolf, inform Starfleet. Aye, sir. Lay in a course for Alanor, warp 5. Right, set course for Alanor. Engage. Captain, I've been studying our records of one of the Chodak devices we found on Horse 3. It appears to have been designed to measure the period of a pulsar for use as a standard of time. Translating Chodak time units would be a major breakthrough. It will give us a better understanding of Chodak science. Unfortunately, the Zatarnus Nebula has expanded since the Chodak abandoned the station. The Nebula now completely obscures the Pulsar. The Nebula grew that quickly? The Zatarnus Nebula is one of the youngest celestial bodies in the galaxy. Are there observations of a Pulsar in that region of space? None in Federation records, but the Chodak star chart does contain a pulsar at the proper coordinates. Can we observe the pulsar ourselves? The pulsar is on the far side of the nebula. It cannot be observed from anywhere within Federation space. Does it have a name? 
We should be sure a science vessel is sent to observe it. The Chodak chart refers to it as the Gambara Pulsar. It lies in unexplored space near the Romulan border. Interesting. Helm, standard orbit. Captain's Log, we have arrived at the planet Alanor, where we hope to find information about the Unity device, a legendary super weapon created by the ancient Chodak. Although we've managed to travel deep into the neutral zone without being challenged, I feel certain that an encounter with the Romulans is only a matter of time. Well, we need to get that weapon then. <laughs> Love to test that on some Romulans. We have completed our scan of the planet. The surface is heavily damaged and radiation levels are high, possibly the result of war in the distant past. Are there any life signs? No, sir, but we have detected an extensive network of caverns below the surface. We are picking up Cochrane field emissions from one of the chambers. Is it a natural phenomenon? I do not believe so. The field is exhibiting a binary modulation pattern, which may imply some form of computer in operation. Sounds like a good place to begin a search. Sir, many of the caverns are heavily shielded. Our comm systems and transporters will be unable to penetrate them. The nearest beam in point is more than three kilometers from the Cochrane field source. Then that will have to be close enough. I'll lead the away team myself. Captain, we have no <laughs> idea what's down there. We can't risk it. Number one, we have no choice. The Unity device, if it exists, could be a weapon of incredibly destructive power. We must learn what it is and what it can do. My knowledge of the Chodak could be vital to the success of our mission. All right, sir. I'll assemble and await him. Make it so. It still strikes me as odd how in Star Trek they send all the senior staff down on an away mission. Beam down coordinates selected. Oh, hang on. Who's that? Who's that? It can't be Troy. Can you locate the source of the Cochrane field wow. the ship sensors detected? The Cochrane field source lies in this direction. If the source of the Cochrane field emissions is truly an operational computer, there's no telling what we might learn. I just hope there's enough information to allow us to find the Unity device. Ah, uh, yeah, look. You know, I was kind of hoping that would be a red shirt, but oh well. Maybe they're expendable, I don't know. Ooh. Think. A screen over there. One of those things. I believe it's an ancient starship schedule. No unusual readings. Whoa. I've recorded the information for later study. The source of the Cochrane field emissions is located approximately three kilometers from this chamber. We believe that the Chodak used drones for many purposes. Fascinating. Fascinating. Judging from the dust along the seam, this door hasn't been opened in quite some time. There is a passage behind the grill. Oh. I deal with going through that then. The seal is composed of a softer material than the grill. Phaser setting eight should vaporize the metal seals on the grill. Oh. He's assessing eight. Mm. The phaser had no effect. You said it would work. Okay, let's see. Alloy seal. We may need to increase the phaser power setting. You said setting eight. That did something. There's another one. 
Ah, cool. Whoops. The phaser had no effect. Phaser setting eight should be sufficient to remove the seals holding the grill over the ventilation duct. Like clicking in the right place, isn't it? Um, let's see. Oh, there we go. We use our weapons purely for defense. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, what? Kicking doors down. This passage is taking us farther away from the source of the Cochrane field. What do you think of Chodak technology, Geordie? It's a curious combination, Captain. What do you mean? Well, a lot of this stuff looks pretty dated by Federation standards. Other things are so advanced, I can't even guess what they're for. You know, I'm kind of getting some vibes of the Voyager Caretaker episode when they're in that massive underground city. Colour's a bit different, but yeah. Reminds me of it for some reason. So we have, wow, cavern, that'd be where we came from, somehow. That was like a waterfall. Let's go see the display panels up there. We're heading away from the Cochrane field source. Okay. It's not the first time you said that, so why why do you keep saying that? I feel like he's trying to point us in give us a bit of a clue there. We might be able to use the Chodak Isolinear rod to activate this panel. Good thinking. Yeah, look at that, we've got a slot. It appears to be a control panel. It appears to be a control panel. Hmm. It appears to be a control panel. It appears to be a control panel. <laughs> it appears to be a control oh, panel. Oh, come on. Uh... Only a properly programmed isolinear rod can activate the panel. Hmm. It did not work. Did it not? My analysis of the Chodak isolinear rod we found on Phrygis indicates that it, or a similar device, should activate this panel. Well, I just tried that, Mr. Data, but it didn't seem to work. Do it this way? Will that work? Uh... Ah, okay, you gotta do it that way. That's strange. The programmer failed to find the access code. I will alter the search parameters. Glad we brought data along. The programmer failed to find the access code. I will alter the search parameters. Let's go back to where we came in. Uh, I also wish we should make him him try it. Maybe he specializes in that, perhaps. This is almost too easy. Too easy. Oh. It's a control panel. Oh, I see. It's a control panel. It worked. Oh! Okay, so it worked this time. Well, I'm not complaining. Alright, let's see. Um, system log? Ooh. Yeah, that doesn't look too good. It's a control panel. Line entry F could be us accessing this panel. But the unscheduled arrival at line D is probably our arrival. Exactly. Then sentry AA3-G must be that derelict drone. Let's go back to the first page of entries. Line 6 must be the Romulan's arrival. It looks like they used the transporter and then returned to the arrival area. Perhaps they destroyed the main transporter to prevent anyone else from finding any information about the Unity device. It looks as if the Romulans landed a shuttle in some kind of landing dock as well as beaming in. I wonder why. It's a control panel. It's a control panel. Yeah, thank you. I know that. Ooh. Dispatch repair unit. Why not? 
This action is non recoverable. So, ooh. Pretty intuitive. Oh. Let's try going back. Not much to the main room. Ah, I've missed an area over here to the right. Ooh. Look at that. It's a piece of thin metal sheet. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Not good. Ooh, that does not look friendly. Uh... The large drone appears to be repaired in the small oh. arm. I noticed an infrared flash transmitted between the two drones. I think it might have been some kind of deactivation signal. We could attempt to duplicate the pulse with the tricorder's output synthesizer. And that might allow us to turn the drones on and off ourselves. Interesting. The system works by separating the factors of a fifth order hyperbolic equation and... Data, just do it. <laughs> yes, Captain. Let's pick up this metal. And the paperclip. Cool. Right, let's get out of here. I don't like this. Animation's pretty cool, though. Let's get back to the first room. Not much good, I'm afraid. Not much good. Right, okay. It looks broken. <sighs> My visor's picking up infrared emissions. This drone still has power. It didn't work. Ah, remove foreign objects. It emits broadband electromagnetic pulses. No wonder the drone's circuits were scrambled. Welcome to Eleanor. Hi. Do you have anything to declare? Please note that the Emergency War Act is in effect. I wonder if this drone knows that more than 900,000 years have passed since its creators became extinct. Let's deactivate it for now. I don't trust these things. Hmm. What did we just get? So we've got a logic inhibitor. Let's go back. To that room. Also, one thing I will remind you to do if you are playing this, save as frequently as possible. Because if the ship gets destroyed or one of your characters dies, then it's mission failure. Ooh. Okay, uh... I think we... Can't move. Okay, where can we go to? Let's walk to the door. May I suggest we widen our search? Oh. Right, okay, so we're at the door. Let's see. Try quarter time? Ooh. Ah, neat. That's pretty cool. Are there things we scanned before?
Mm. The logic circuits which control the door are inside this casing. Right. That must sense the approaching drones. I was just going to say, I wonder if we can use the logic inhibitor. Oh, hang on. Well, I've just... That's what I was... Oh, it looks like I've stopped the door. That was fun. Um. Okay. We're in business. Oh. That's surprising. Right, let's go in there then. We should leave the logic inhibitor here to prevent the door from closing behind us. Oh, you got a good point there. And I've not done that. Oh dear. Oh, we have. Oh, good thinking. Can you imagine? Okay. What's in here? We have a drone. Had a drone. I think I've deactivated it. Unless that's the same one. Hmm. Is that in the other room? Display panel. Uh. I see no way of using this with that object. <laughs> ah. Hmm. Okay. So that did something. Ooh, and it did. We have funny noises and sparking electric. The drone blocks the walkway. Hmm. Can we reactivate the drone? No unusual readings. No unusual readings. Ooh. That doesn't look good, does it? Data. Uh oh. Okay, so. <laughs> Do not activate that drone, or in fact, do not walk anywhere near it because it will zap you. Even Commander Data isn't invulnerable. We need to power this thing down. Ah, there we go. It's hard finding the correct spot to do it on. I can't make it work with that. All right, let's try deactivating. <laughs> We'll keep the station online. That looks a bit better. So basically, if we walk over there, we're going to get zapped. Let's see. So this is a capacitor. Oh, would you look at that? Okay. So there's still power in it, but... It's drained. That's interesting. So, how can we drain it some more? Mm. Okay, you're up, Geordie. Mm. Oh, wait, no. It's still charged, isn't it? Don't want to zap you again. Ah, here we go. So this should... Oh. So it's not charging, is it? And now it's stuck, so I can't get past it. I believe we can safely use the phaser to disable the charging mechanism, oh, as long as the capacitor has only a residual charge. Ah, okay. But what's that r robot going to do? If we destroy the charger now, we won't have any way of inducing the drone to move out of our way. Ah, rats. Right, so I've reloaded back, and there's no drone there, so let's try firing. Oh. That did something. Oops. Wasn't me. Um, let's try going past and hope. I think it's electrocuted. Are we okay? Uh-oh, what's going on? Loading. Ooh, one of those. What a... Who are you? Where is your master? Speak. Ooh. I am Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Starship Enterprise. I have full authority to represent the Federation. Please follow me, sir. Our master will want to speak with you. Follow me, please. Yeah, let's follow them. Interesting. To the opening. 
I see we have unexpected guests. <laughs> All right, let's talk to them. We must not speak. Our master is here. Greetings. Please do not be alarmed. Our intentions are peaceful. Visitors are not shunned. Who are you? I am Captain Picard of the USS Enterprise. I represent the United Federation of Planets. How did you get here? We detected no other ships in the system. We have always been here. We are the uh, uh, caretakers of this planet. Caretakers? We thought this planet was abandoned long ago. We are the descendants of those who survived the Civil War. You are Chodak. You have heard of us. What is the purpose of your visit? We are on an archaeological research expedition. You risk war with the Romulans for mere curiosity? The Romulans? Our treaty with the Romulans makes an exception for scientific exploration. Yes. But a Romulan commander wouldn't worry about exceptions to your treaty unless the fight went badly for him. So you have dealt with the Romulans? A Romulan delegation was also here recently. What did the Romulans want? They too claimed to be on an archaeological expedition. They proved unfriendly. Perhaps you will be more amiable? <laughs> While we do not wish to fight, our mission is vital. We cannot permit any interference. It is you who interfere. Your mission here is not so innocent as you pretend. You wish to steal that which is rightfully ours. Take them. Should we kill them, sir? What? Use the paper clip. It's our only hope. Hey. Uh-oh. This did not end well. Uh, computer end program. Oh no. Uh. -oh. Ooh. Sir, these creatures have an encryption rod. These creatures have brought us that which we seek. With this rod, we can access the files in the main computer. Revive them and take them with us. But use the ocular inhibitor on them first. Well, that was a heck of a cliffhanger to end on. We know that they're going to be revived, hopefully, but what's next? And this new alien species that we've just encountered don't seem the most friendliest, do they? Wouldn't it be interesting if we actually end up siding with the Romulans against this new alien race? I'm really looking forward to what happens next. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Bye for now.